All right, so today I'm actually going to show you guys how to make the ultimate bulletproof beetle spin. That's the beetle spin we made. Pretty cool, huh? You know, the Johnson Beetle Spin on its own is a great economical lure. Um, very cheap. Any fisherman of any sorts can afford this lure. It's like you can go to Lakeside Fishing Shop and buy these for a little over a buck. Um, it's a really great all around lure to use through all the four different seasons, especially if you're down south. Um, I've heard a lot of southern fishermen doing really well uh, with this spinner bait uh, for largemouth bass. Um, I've even done pretty well with it for smallmouth bass, but I would say this spinner bait is primarily a largemouth bassler and I do really well with it over in Lake St. Clair Marina. And But it does have its problems, even though it's been my go-to bait since childhood. I mean, I've been using this slur since I was 10 years old and I swear to God, I've come over here in the marina before and actually caught 50 bass on it. But as I found out through the years, there are some problems with it. Um, you know, the wire uh, Johnson uses on these beetle spin tend to be really cheap. Um, if you get, a, you know, catch three or four uh, largemouth bass in a row, uh, you know, by that next one, it, the wire is going to be weakened. And sometimes you can lose some of the biggest fish because of that cheaper wire. Um, you know, they use a crane swivel, as you can see. Uh, the crane swivel is kind of cheap. Um, we're going to use a heavier duty VMC bolt bearing swivel for that and um, and the blade they use is a Colorado blade um, this is actually a custom Hildebrand Colorado blade a goldish one um, but the blade tends to be too small for my liking and they tend to use a quarter ounce you can, I think they do have 3 8 ounce uh, which is nice um, and the body on these tends to be way too small and I actually use a bigger split tail grub so get, let's get with it here. This is basically um, what it looks like, my bulletproof beetle spin. Again, the body's bigger, the willow blade is a lot bigger. This is a number six uh, Hildebrand willow blade. And as you can see, the wire is a lot more beefier. This is a .040 wire. And so let's get with it here. Um, the tools you're gonna need, um, I highly recommend buying these Nipix round nose pliers. Um, I'm gonna throw uh, the different sizes uh, round nose pliers in the description of this video. You'll check, I have a, a bigger one for musky. I have a medium size one for bass. And if you wanna get a really smaller size, which I have these uh, round nose pliers for, for even smaller lures. Uh, but this is really good for making that smaller loop where you'll be attaching uh, the willow blade. So the round nose pliers, and you're going to want some have some heavy duty snips to clip that heavy duty stainless steel .40 wire. And of course the .40 wire, you can find this on eBay. Just make sure it's uh, stainless steel. These are 8 inch. And I like the jig heads uh, at Bass Pro. These are 3 8 ounce, a 4 over 0 uh, size hook, um, and they're Gamagatsu hooks. So you can pick these up at Bass Pro Shops. It's a Bass Pro brand. These are pretty beefy hooks, pretty strong hooks. And um, as you notice, the body I use is a lot bigger than the traditional beetle spin. This is from a bet spin. You can find these also at Bass Pro Shops. Um, I prefer uh, using the black stripes down the middle and the black stripe on back. You know, they do have uh, that red dot in the white body, but I really like the black stripes. I don't know why this tends to catch a lot more bass. 
and you notice again the size of the body is a lot bigger a lot thicker and that's what i like using these are the number six hildebrand will blades top notch man these are kind of expensive but you get what you pay for these are premium blades and they work really well and this is the vmc uh, size one ball bearing swivel very beefy um, you know if the a big musky or pike comes and hits the blade they're not going to rip it off real beefy and then how i attach that willow blade is using the hyper wire split ring number two size these are very heavy duty um, what's nice is when you you know fit that you separate the split ring and you fit that blade in it the the willow blade in there it pops back into place compared to a lot of these other chip cheaper split rings like you know when you separate them with your fingernail or whatever you know uh, sp split ring players um, once you separate them they they lose their strength and like sometimes they won't even snap back in place so these you don't have to worry about that pick these up online uh, sad that not a lot of brick and mortar stores carries, carry these more because there could be multi use for these and what's nice is since they're so strong and they're like forged and strong recoil and they pop back into place you don't have to worry about that willow blade coming off in your casting because that was one of the main problems i was having with my <laughs> musky size beetle spin with this number eight willow blade but i'm actually using a super heavy duty split ring right here and you know but i'm just saying that having a heavy duty split ring can make all the difference so that willow blade doesn't come off and Look forward to a video. I'm going to make uh, a video I'm going to uh, put together making that lure. But for now, we're just going to make the bass bulletproof beetle spin. So let's get with it here. You're going to take your uh, 0 .040 8 inch wire, um, take medium size, size round nose pliers, and you kind of want to see um, what size loop you're going to want to make in the middle here. So mark that you know kind of with your finger so it's about right in the middle on those round nose pliers that's the size of the loop we're gonna make and be sure to have like a beetle spin on hand so you can try to mimic this wire because that's what we're going to be making right now and this is kind of like you know the toughest part of making the bulletproof beetle spin but it can be fun if you like making layers this is a lot of fun some fishermen you know if you want you can buy these already made on ebay and amazon um, they're called jig spinner wire form and so you can find them on ebay just use those keywords you'll find them already made but here's the thing might not be able to find them in this thickness uh, size a 0 0.040 at more heavier duty size so that's why i prefer making it myself i don't really have to worry about you know the wire breaking using someone else's creation that tends to be like cheaper so here we go we're gonna find somewhere in the middle right there doesn't have to be super accurate so we're gonna make that loop bring the wire back around like so And so once you're there, like right here, um, you're gonna use your flat of your hand to like bring this these two wires back like so, and it's gonna make that loop real perfectly. <sighs> kind of like making a triangle. So there we go. That's pretty damn accurate and perfect, man. There we go. Not too bad, huh? So let's compare that, what I have right here. Oh yeah, so that's basically perfection. Um, so then the, the next part is making the snap, which can be which can be a little tough. Again, keep looking at it. We're gonna have to make um, this loop right here, right here where the jig head attaches to it. Kind of mark, you know, mark the spot where you want to start making that bend. I like starting a little forward because as you notice when you start curling that loop um it you know the wire keeps moving back so you want to start a little forward not too much though just to mimic that size so right about there i would want to say and we're going to bend it back make 
make that loop. Like so, you see? Not too tough. Let's see where we're at. That's, that's just about right. And you notice how this part, this part, kind of, these two parts on the, both the sides of that loop bend in. Just so that jig head kind of stays in that, that loop and doesn't move around. We're going to have to do that right now. And so what we're doing is bending it back just a tad bit. Just like so. And then this side as well. Now you hear my wrist crack. So, kind of like making a roof of a house. Pretty easy. And then you're going to take your regular pliers. These are also Nipex, which I recommend buying. Just squeeze it together. Very simple. And so we basically made that loop where uh, that jig head's going to sit and, you know, it's gonna, not going to move around. And you notice when you squeeze it together, it looks just like the other one down below. Um, and so the next thing we got to do, let's take a comparison look. Is we're going to have to make a 90 degree right angle going this way, okay? That's pretty darn simple, but let's mark it with our fingers where we want to bend that wire, mimicking the same beetle spin I already have made. Again, I like going a tad bit forward. And you know what, if you make a few mistakes the first time, no big deal, man. Don't get bent out of shape about it. It's all about practice. Uh, the more you use these round nose players, um, the easier it's going to get. I promise. Okay? It's supposed to be fun, so don't get too mad at yourself if you make a mistake. Um, you know what? Sometimes I'll go fishing and I haven't made a few lures in a while, and I'll go back to it. And believe it or not, I'll be making mistakes left and right. You know, it just... It's part of the game, man. Don't get, don't be too hard on yourself if you make a mistake. So we're going to be bending that wire back. Oh, so we kind of got in the way right here. So we're gonna make sure it loops, loops around that. So there we go. So that snap, I, I bet you, it, yeah, it tends to be a little shorter. See, I made, eh, it's, it's a little shorter than that other one, but that's not too big of a deal. And so the next thing we're going to have to make is a loop. This is going to loop around the main shaft. And this part's a little tough, you know. So right there, I'm gonna bring that wire around. Look at the impression on my finger. Just like so. And again, once you've kind of made it halfway, like you see here, you can take your traditional pliers again and just squeeze that together. Like there. So not too bad. So we're gonna trim that end off. And as you can see, you've just made your uh, snap for your beetle spin. And it just goes right over the main shaft. Very simple, uh, changing out that jig head. 
uh, from different sizes. You know, what makes the beetle spin very versatile is you can go from a 1 8 ounce, uh, a quarter ounce, a 3 8 ounce, a half ounce, or even deeper water out on for smallmouth, you know. So pretty cool, man. Pretty darn cool. Uh, so the next thing we're going to have to do is make that little loop where you're going to be attaching that uh, ball bearing swivel. So um, sometimes this side, some people prefer going a little shorter because the shorter you have it, the less you separate the blade from this hook. I think the more fish you'll catch. But then again, I mean, if you look at it on traditional spinner bait, sometimes um, the triangle wire is like very far apart. So it, it's up to you where you want to. Um, I kind of, you know, I like it a tad bit shorter. So we're gonna, going to make the bend right about there. Take my medium ones just a tad bit stronger. small as possible so basically that's what you have right there um, if, if you know you bent that up a little bit no problem you can bend it back with your regular pliers um, so what we're gonna do is um, basically clip off the rest of that wire at the end here like so Bending some of that stuff back into place. You know, since since this is really a thick wire, you know, it might weaken a little bit, but not too much. So we basically made our uh, jig spinner wire form. You know, pretty good. Let's see how it matches up to this one right here. Oh yeah, pretty pretty. Uh, Pretty similar, man. Pretty good. Pretty. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So we're gonna have to separate that loop to put on our um, ball bearing swivel here. just like so and so we're gonna close that back up I like using the regular pliers to do this you can make that loop a lot smaller so as you can see but you want it loose you know you want that uh, that loop not too small uh, so this ball bearing swivel can move around and so we're gonna clip off the rest of that end snips like so Let's see if we can clip it off a little more I don't think so but now you're gonna take these bit beefy round nose pliers you're going to just flatten that. So I'm doing, I'm flattening that because it's kind of misaligned a little bit. go that's basically we've made our I mean this is the hardest part of course of making uh, the bulletproof beetle spin 
Now we just basically have to attach the jig head, attach um, the hyperwire split ring, and then attach the blade. So the hardest part is over. We'll do the split ring next. So right now we're going to be separating that split ring. You can use your finger now. Your thickest one, of course, which is your thumb. And you got to get that solid ring around that, in between that split ring. Can be a little tough. This is where split ring pliers come in handy, which I should have included, but I don't have a really good pair, so I tend to use my fingernails still. Got her done. And, and, and so the easy part is just sliding in um, the Hildebrand willow blade in between the split ring. You don't really even need to use your finger, fingernail to do this. Just do the edge of the um, the willow blade so I just popped it in there and so we just got to work that willow blade inside the split ring like so so we're pretty much done the next part is putting on a jig head again I like using these uh, jig heads by Bass Pro they're Gamagatsu hooks pretty beefy pretty be pretty strong um, point is making a pretty solid beetle spin so you can catch a fish that hook doesn't break, it's not dull, very sharp, get a good hook set. Gamagatsu is the way to go, I think. So pop that snap back in. And if that snap becomes loose, you can kind of bend it forward a little bit. That'll tighten it up, you know, common sense. Um, and so we're going to take our bet spin body right here and put it over the hook. Um, as you notice... Kind of has a greenish glow to it. It doesn't supposed to look like that. It's from actually discoloration and heating up in my tackle box. I think I had another soft plastic next to it, and so the fumes just—I mean, I just they, they heated up and they got on the white bait and turned it kind of green. Kind of sucks, but that's why you kind of have to have a really good um, tray or you know tackle box to separate your soft plastic so this doesn't happen. So, but. What are you going to do? So there we go. We have our perfectly made bulletproof beetle spin, man. Pretty sweet, huh? Now the next thing is, the fun part, is catching bass with this. Um, just to show you, you know, anytime you make a really quality spinner bait or you buy a quality spinner bait, you want to put it up into the wind and see if that blade will just move freely on its own. To me, that signifies a really quality made spinner bait using a really quality made ball bearing swivel and you see how smooth that blade spins i mean some people like using barrel swivel swivels or crane swivels some say they grind more especially the musky fishermen to me i want that blade to uh, spin freely as can be um it's to me it still gives off a decent thump using this VMC ball bearing swivel even though it's pretty smooth. Um, I think adding that extra split, split ring down below um, makes the blade, uh, you know, uh, spin and wiggle a little more freely than... There's some companies you can buy uh, ball bearing swivels that have both split rings on either end. But I notice you just, you risk losing a blade. I think this is the most secure way to attach a willow blade, especially a beefy one like the Hildebrand number six. And so I'll go a ball bearing swivel with two solid rings to a split ring to a willow blade. And that tends to work. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to catch some bass. And I'm going to show you guys how to work this great lure because it's, again, one of the, my best go-to baits in my tackle box. So if it's early spring like it is now, April 1st, you're going to want to cast it out, let the spinnerbait drop, let it hit the bottom, and very, very slowly reel that spinnerbait off the bottom. And as it starts to rise, you're going to want to stop, let it drop again, hit that bottom, and start reeling slowly. Because that's a problem with some of these larger uh, willow-bladed spinnerbaits is they want to rise with that bigger blade. 
Um, you know, you can try a Colorado blade, but I prefer a willow blade, and that's what I use. And for whatever reason, this is one of the biggest tips I'll tell you, cast diagonally with the docks. You know, no matter what marina you're fishing at, whether it's Lake St. Clair or some other larger lake, inland lake, could be even a river, try casting diagonal with the poles and the docks, and I swear to God, this technique catches fish all the time. <clears throat> so again, watch your line on top, and so it stopped. You're gonna wanna start reeling very slowly, keep your rod tip down. Um, you know, as the water temperatures increase, there we go, first fish. Can you believe that? Decent one. There you go. First cast. Cast diagonally with the docks. That'll catch them. And then <clears throat> custom bulletproof beta spin. There you go. So that's number one. Oh man, can you believe that? Nice fish, man. Now here's the thing. You can cast in line with the docks. And that'll work just as good, even casting over to the other side. But I swear, something to do with casting diagonally, maybe you're covering more structure down there with the poles. You know, when I put my underwater drone down there, the Genino Titan, I noticed all the bass seem to be hanging around near the poles. So you're going to want to cast near the poles. <clears throat> we'll try casting in, in line this time and see if we'll get anything. It's about 50 degrees right now, or close to it. So as that water temperature starts to warm, they're just gonna start biting like crazy. So very, very slowly, let that uh, willow blade do its magic. Stop again, let it sink back to the bottom. Again, you're gonna wanna skim the bottom. and. With this larger blade, it just rises to the top very rapidly. Now, one of the drawbacks of the larger blade is it'll catch the wind while you're casting. And if you're casting in the marina, you got to watch out for other boats. You know, you might end up hooking the dock. So if it's, like, say, an east wind, you're going to want to cast to the right a little more and anticipate that lure flying to the left. As the water temperatures rise, you know, you'll be able to reel it a lot faster. You, you know, you'll be able to buzz it on top. But right now in the spring, it just seems like a lot of those bass are on the bottom and they're kind of lethargic. So that's where you want to keep it. <clears throat> and you know, everyone goes for the smallmouth out on Lake St. Clair. The largemouth bass in these marinas over in St. Clair Shores is basically an untapped resource. This can be a lot of fun in the springtime, and this is a great time to break that PB. Um, you know, I've caught four pounders out of here, and I've even got some nice size five pounders. I think with that extra size willow blade, I think one day I might be able to hook into a six pound largemouth bass. You know, if those smallmouth bass are shut down on the main lake, you know, it could have rained before. Um, it could have been really windy, turned up the water, turned out to be very murky. Smallmouth are very finicky bass. Largemouth bass, I'd say not so much. And a lot of times, even though it, the water is very murky out on Lake St. Clair, the main lake, you can come in these marinas and the water can be clear and the largemouth bass will be hitting. And that's when you got to tie on a beetle spin and go to town because this lure, you'll have a lot of fun catching fish. Uh, you know, I've gone out, you know, I've gone over here at the docks and caught like 50 large mount bass in one day. No joke with this lure. This lure, again, is still one of my go to baits. Um, I thought I'd never find a lure that would beat it, but then I met Northern Mike and he turned me on to the chatterbait. Um, I'd say chatterbait is like, is definitely in my top three but so is the beetle spin but i would say the chatterbait does tend to have more consistency than the beetle spin over at kent lake but you know i haven't tried a chatterbait over here so that may actually change
You know, it's early spring, and you know we got a, all types of areas we can cast this slur. Um, you know, it's too bad the water level so up. I'd show you guys how to skip the lure and get underneath those docks where those bass lie because they like to hide underneath the shadows. But talking about shadows, as they start putting boats in, you know, middle spring, late spring, and <clears throat> you know we get into summer, you won't be able to cast freely in the boat wells. Um, you're going to want to get to the end of the docks, and this is one of the best tricks. I swear to you, I've gotten some nice three, four, five pound bass over in the marina. Um, so, you know, you're going to want to cast in line with the tips of the rest of the docks. And as they put these boats in, you know, the, each boat's going to cast shadow. And just about each boat, there's some really big bass under, you know, under those boats where that shadow lies because most bass, most fish don't like sun. Um, you know, the more you can come out here on overcast days, the better. But if it's really sunny out, this technique can work really well. And so you're going to cast in line with the tips of those docks, let it free fall to the bottom. And as you slowly reel, those, those bass underneath those boats are going to see that beetle spin, you know, swimming by thinking it's bait fish. And they're going to come underneath. They're going to come out from underneath that shadow of that boat, and they're going to hit that lure, man. I'm telling you. Every year this this works, you know, because, again, you're going to learn. You're going to lose uh, spots to cast and fish over in the marinas. Ooh, I think that's going to be right on there, right on the money. Check that out on the custom made beetle spin. That's how you do it, folks. It's a beautiful one, huh? Got a gun on him. Yeah, baby. Hell yeah. That's the beetle spin we made. Pretty cool, huh? Yep. There he goes. Like a shot of lightning. And you get like a more self gratification of just going out catching your you know fish on your own fishing lure. Um, at least I do. I mean, <clears throat> you gotta try it at least once or twice. Give it a try. See if you really like it. I mean, some I know other fishermen they would just rather go out to the store, Bass Pro you know, or Cabela's and buy, you know, a, a traditional fishing lure. But the great thing about customizing, like the point of this whole video is you can bulletproof a fishing lure. A lot of these lures can't withstand, I mean, you gotta remember these lures are made to sell in mass production. And so they use, tend to use a lot of cheap parts. You know, by making your own custom lure, you can get past all that crap and make it efficient enough to catch some really big bass and not have to worry about losing some really big bass. So, and since this lure is pretty heavy duty, I get a lot of muck on it. I'll just slap that weeds and muck right off. So that's dynamite, like right in between those docks there in that corner. And sometimes you, you know, clank it off a dock, it gives it extra sound and those big bass just lock onto that. And say you're over in the marina and you have a long seawall like this with no docks that are going out. Um, you can cast in line with the seawall and pick up bass that way as well. But you want to get as close as possible to those poles in the seawall. 
Um, you can still actually bring your raw tip over to the left more and uh, bring that bait closer to the seawall if you make a mistake like I did casting a little too far out. But this always picks up fish. You know, if I don't pick up any fish the first time, I'll take one more cast. I like taking two or three casts in the same spot. Um, as my old man taught me, um, if there's no docks and you're fishing from the shoreline, you're always going to want a fan cast. Um, cover as much ground as possible. Um, if I'm fan casting, I won't cast in the same spot uh, more than twice. I'll just, you know. Okay, so this technique will work really well with the beetle spin. Let's say if you're deeper in the marina and there's no structure and it's just a wide open area or you're all the way at the end of the docks and it's a wide open area too. You're going to want a fan cast. And just like, you know, I talked about sometimes I cast in the same spot two or three times especially if I get a strike. Um, fan casting involves not casting in the same spot more than twice. You're going to want to cover as much ground as possible. So bam, 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 bam. Or just you can do it, change it up and hit different spots rather than just, you know, um, doing it like a, a clock would. That way you're covering as much ground as possible, uh, covering where, you know, all types of different fish may be. My old man taught me that technique of fishing. Always works well with open water. And like I said, I like using a 3 8 ounce, but if that's too heavy for wherever you're fishing, you can always change to a quarter ounce. Um, what's so great about this lure is it's very versatile. You can change out that jig head instantly to a quarter ounce, or one eighth ounce, whatever you want for even more shallow water. Um, but I actually prefer the three eighth ounce. I get a really far cast with it. Um, you know, I tend to be more precise, especially when it's windy out with a three eighth ounce. Um, but occasionally I will use a quarter ounce. That's what I tend to use. Uh, most of the time, switching between a 3 8 or quarter ounce and shallow water for largemouth bass. And a 3 8 ounce will work pretty good for Lake St. Clair on the main lake for a small bass and probably I want to say uh, 7 to 10 feet of water. Something tapped it. You know, sometimes folks, you know, when it's early spring like this and the bass are very lethargic, you're not going to want to anticipate that typical boom, 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 boom. You're going to anticipate this blade to stop spinning. And when that blade, you feel that blade stop spinning and you feel your line kind of, you know, become weightless, that's when you set the hook. Because sometimes even these four or five pound largemouth bass, early spring, late March, early April, you know, that's how they'll hit. You know, one of the biggest largemouth bass I ever caught was on um, Four Bear Seam Park Gravel Pit Ponds and he didn't hit hard man. He did not hit hard. And believe it or not, guess what I caught him on? The old beetle spin. So my PB was caught on a beetle spin all the way back in the 90s at Four Bear Seam Park and I haven't been able to top it since then. And until I can get back into those theme parks, you know, until I can get back into those ponds, um, I probably won't be able to top it. I think there is some other uh, spots around Michigan that probably do have some 9 to 10 pound largemouth bass, but they're not easy to come across, I'll tell you that much. So another diagonal cast. Feeling lucky about this spot right here. There we go. Oh, that's a big fish, I think, dude. That's a nice size largemouth, fellas. 
That's got to be a two or a three. Got them in the top jaw. There we go. No, I spotted two. Gorgeous, huh? Oh yeah, eternal angler pulling through with the custom bulletproof beetle spin. That's what I'll we'll call it. Hell yeah, man. Oh, there we go. He hit it on free fall. Here we go, number 10, baby. There we go, little baby. He fought pretty good for a little one, I'll say that much. be a lot of little ones down there that's why I'm trying to set the hook on these little bastards they're just nipping at it could be striking the blade <sighs> they just all this must be a shit little them down there little babies Feels like I could have caught a hundred bass the amount of strikes I missed. Another one, a free fall. He feels bigger. Yeah, he's gotta be bigger. This might be something else though. Oh, it's a bass. That is a good fighter. Not very big. Well, he's got a gut on him, that's why. That's why I feel that weight. Starting to plump up for funny out just two spots right there like I'm on two spots. See look at the gut on him. Yeah. Pretty spawn. There you go. 